Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. It's okay, okay. Dolores. Thank you. That's fine. So we don't have to have it on, but it's just maybe if you want, you can ask me about this one slide, but I am ready to answer any questions and I will speak slowly for Lucia. Ok, lo que dice es que ella va a mostrar esta presentación y que si tienen alguna pregunta eh, la puedan realizar. Eh, lo que explica básicamente es en la línea roja, eh, muestra la, lo, lo, los casos de, de fiebre del año, de este año, 2019 y 2020. You can go, Dolores. Ok, I think Lucia, if it's ok... Uh... You can ask me the questions you wanted. Do you have the questions? Yes, I have them. Mario, okay. ¿le puedo hacer las preguntas? Bueno, si prefieren ese mecanismo, no hay problema. Eh, digo, estén dispuestos después a, a extenderse, porque obviamente de esa manera se va a extender, pero háganlo, no hay problema. Ok, lo único que, puedo, que también puedo aportar de esta gráfica que ella nos explicó el otro día es en referencia a que la cantidad de personas que fueron admitidas en Estados Unidos en, el mismo, en, en otros periodos, la cantidad de gente es la misma con el COVID. Entonces no habría un, eh, un, ex, un número mayor que, eh, que de, por lo que es el COVID. So, Dolores, I'm going to ask you the first question, ok? Um, so, do, do you believe that the virus was indeed intentionally mutated by the including genes from the other viruses to make it more dangerous, as explained by the Dr. Luc Mont Montagnier? So this is, I have sent you the slides, so you have them. So this is the little explanation in the slides about the tiny part of the virus that seems to be man-made, Lucia. Ok, bueno, Dolores. So, eh, ella acá está mostrando la explicación de cómo es la composición del virus eh, de las 10 partes del virus. Estela, cualquier cosa se estima acá. Vale. Eh, no Dolores. So, this is an example of six different types of coronavirus from human bat Pagolin, human, bat, bat, Lucia. Ok, entonces acá tiene, lo que ella nos está mostrando son seis ejemplos diferentes de coronavirus que se vieron en personas humanas. You can go. That's why you can just say Dolores, Lucia, I'll do, we'll do it that way. Um, ok. So if you see the top one, human, stars, cove, two, at yes. 680, There are um, amino acids in boxes, and underneath them, in the other mm -hmm. five, there's just lines, nothing. Lucia. Ok, entonces lo que ella está explicando es que en el primer virus, en el SARS-CoV-2, o sea, en la primera línea, muestra que hay seis aminoácidos. Mientras que en los otros tipos de coronavirus, si ven a la columna, que es la columna amarilla, digamos, no hay ningún aminoácido. Mm -hmm. Right. So, they are uh, four amino acids, which is 12 RNA nucleotides, because each amino acid has three nucleotides, Lucia. So, there are... Estela, there are, son cuatro... Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that, Dolores, please? Yeah, just, so there are 300 RNA nucleotides in the SARS COVID-19, 30,000 RNA nucleotides, Lucia. Sí, eh, entonces dice que hay 300 tipos de núcleos. Sí, en el COVID, RNA yeah. no sé qué es. ¿Alguien sabe de los médicos? RNA. Sí. And the only difference in COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 is these 12 nucleotides, which are four amino acids. Lucia. Lucia. Uh, Principalmente la diferencia que ella nos menciona es que eh, en estos 12 tipos de, de núcleos, 
Hay cuatro tipos diferentes de aminoácidos. So this is the teeny tiny bit that's different between SARS-CoV-2 and the rest of the 30,000 RNA nucleotides in SARS-CoV-2. What's ONA, Dolores? Mm -hmm. Dile a Julio que no use el teléfono porque acopla. Okay. So maybe I'll keep talking while uh, Lucia is moving there. So it turns out that these four amino acids actually come. Can you see them here? There are 12 nucleotides, C, C, T, C, C, G, C, G, 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 C, A. Okay, so that is, esos ahí son 12 tipos de núcleo. Tipo de núcleo, ¿no? Sí. Sí. Yes, you can go, Dolores. You know, the nucleotides are very different from the nucleus, Lucia. Que los tipos de... De, de, de núcleos son muy diferentes al núcleo, dice. Exacto. Yes. So the nucleotides are like RNA and DNA. You uh -huh. know, in uh -huh. RNA you have uracil, and then in DNA, you know, you have ACTG in DNA, and then yeah. in RNA you have uracil. So the CCT, CCG, that is the RNA that is the message of the virus, the message for the genes and proteins. And right. this one has 12 nucleotides, which is four amino acids. Right. Entonces lo que ella dice, que los, el CCT, el CCG, los cuatro tipos de amino acids, el CGG y el GCA, son mm -hmm. tipos de ONA, que es diferente al DNA, Bien. Y que esto, estos tipos de aminoácidos que están marcados acá en amarillo son los que tienen toda la información, que son las proteínas, las enzimas y todo lo que ella men mencionó. You can go, Dolores. So in a natural uh, 30,000 genome, sometimes one nucleotide changes, like here, that's natural mutation. Ah. Lo que ella dice es que esa, esta G que está mostrando... Eh, es, una es una mutación natural del gen, que eso es normal. Ok. So this insertion of this is not natural. Entonces, wow. lo, que, okay, ah. lo que ella está mostrando, que quiero mostrar, es que estos cuatro tipos de aminoácidos marcados en amarillo no son naturales, por lo tanto fueron insertados. Ok. And um, why I got in trouble a little, me, you know why I got trouble? Yes. Yeah. Is that in this paper, the Nature Medicine, that's a really important journal. Sí. And I am just one little person. Mm -hmm. If you look, look at this line here, it's exactly the opposite of what I'm saying. Okay. The sentence oh. here. Dolores, so, lo que ella dice es que en este diario, que es un diario muy importante de allá de, de Irlanda, que se llama Nature Medicine, o sea, Medicina Natural, lo mm -hmm. que dice es exactamente lo opuesto a lo que ella está probando en esta eh, diapositiva con estas imágenes. You can go. So this is why people were not happy, I think, in the science community in general with what I was saying. But it's completely right. obvious. Right. Entonces, lo que ella dice que es muy probable que por este motivo que ella se posiciona en un lugar opuesto a lo que dice la medicina es que la comunidad científica no está contenta con lo que ella dice. Right. So to be a little bit controversial, you know the way the Lancet paper they concluded something that was not correct. So what I'm saying is that my analysis of the Nature Medicine paper is that what they wrote in the abstract was not correct. Mm. Right, sí. En lo que está reafirmando es que lo que ellos escribieron en este diario que se llama Nature Medicine mm -hmm. está equivocado. Right. But it's so obvious, you know, that there, there is nothing there underneath. It's just, it would take, you know, someone who is an undergraduate in first year 
It's so obvious, it's not correct that it is man-made. Right. Entonces lo que ella dice que es algo muy obvio de que no es algo natural y que obviamente fue implantado eh, en, el, en el ADN o en el humano. And right. the reason, so this was from the Dave Cullen, the first video I made on the 11th of May. Yeah. I had these slides and there are five papers The 12 nucleotides, four amino acids, actually have a function called furin site, Lucia. Right. Entonces, ella acá lo que está mostrando es del primer video que ella hizo en mayo, de, en mayo y sí. lo que es, es el resultado de cinco estudios donde se muestran 12 eh, tipos diferentes de núcleos. Right. So the four amino acids actually code for this RSSR, the, you know, the um, amino acids are yes. RSSR, and this is a furin site, and there were a number of publications where labs published that they put these 12 nucleotides and move them from one part of a virus into another. Lucia. Um, hmm. Will I say again? Yes, please. So I'll show you. See here, this is, you see here, this is the 12. Um, so just to go back, these are okay. the nucleotides here, R, R, A, R, or R, R, A, R, S. This yes. So you you yes. 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 So if you look at the bottom of this paper, you can see RRSRR, that this is the furin site. And in 2006, there were publications where they popped this into um, SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV-1, Lucia. So you mean that in the first COVID, in the first COVID they introduced these nucleotypes in the code? So... In the, it looks like the coronavirus in 2002 and 3 was natural. Okay. But it looks like the SARS COVID 1, there was a tiny component that came from a lab as well mm -hmm. in 2005 when it was published in 2006. Ay, Dolores. Entonces, Estela, corregime si no Ahí está. Eh, ella dice que en los dos primeros estudios de 2001 era y 2002 eran naturales, pero sí. que ahora en 2005 y 2006 en este I could be wrong. Pero también ella puede estar equivocada, dice. Ah. Right. Perfecto. ¿Por qué so piensa then, eso, Dolores? And why do you think, Mario is asking, why do you think that, Dolores? Why do I think I could be wrong? Yes. yes. Well, I feel I have to say that. You what? I feel I must say that all the time to make it sound like I am humble this year. <laughs> que ella tiene que decir eso todo, todas las veces para parecer más humilde, bien, ¿no? Bien. Que digamos. Yeah. Bien. Par politesse, como dice francés. <laughs> It's okay. I, I wanted to ask a question. I que want to ask a question to Dolores. <laughs> ask a question, please. Yes, yes. Um, how did they manage to introduce the, the virus in America and in the rest of the world? How do you think they managed to introduce, uh, in, you know, j just a, a, an escalation? They, they started by Europe, then... Italy, Spain, eh? and, and then America, and then South America, and, the, and it is all over the world. And the second question is, how does will affect 
all the patients, for us, for example, our melanoma patients, we are um, uh, supposing that in the next two years or in the next year, there will be three or, th or four more cases. We are going to triplicate the cases because of this time that patients didn't go to the doctor to go and see the moles and all that. So that is happening in all the, uh, all, all the other malady, all the other sort of, uh, illnesses, uh, all the other cancers. So what will this virus affect the, the health of the world as a whole? That, that are my questions. Thank you. So I think, thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, I think it was an accident. So it, there's, it's, it's a little complicated. So this, it looks like that this virus started to be made in America, uh, in the labs in North Carolina and Fort Detrick, um, okay. up, up until 2015, Lu Lucia. Right. Entonces, lo que dice es que el virus acá en América eh, fue producido en laboratorios, probablemente cerca del año 2015, en North Carolina. North Carol, Carol, North, North Carolina, Carolina, está bien. Sí. North Carolina, en el norte de Carolina, y así fue como llegó a América. Ok, continue. So, in 2016, the scientific community said that it was illegal and criminal to add sections to a virus that could make it more dangerous, Lucia. Mm -hmm. Ta, entonces lo que ella dice es que en el año 2016 eh, la comunidad científica dijo que era ilegal agregar secciones al virus, o sea, hacer mutaciones en laboratorio del virus, porque eso puede ser más perjudicial para nosotros los humanos. Ok. ¿Sí? So I'm going to flick through the various papers to show you while I'm talking, Lucia, just to tell them. Ok. Le, ahora lo que ella nos va a mostrar son los diferentes estudios, eh, notas que han salido en los diarios y prensa para ella probar de dónde saca toda esta información. Ok. So before 2016, it was legal to do this furan site in a number of viruses. So there were papers in 2006, in Japan 2008, doing this, um, putting in the furan site, which is called a gain of function, Lucia. Ok, entonces lo que ella está mostrando acá eh, son diarios, por ejemplo, esto es en Japón, donde eh, se hicieron, eh, se insertaron cuatro, cuatro aminoácidos. aminoácidos diferentes en el virus, transmutándolo de, de lo que era el, el virus en sí. Ok. So that we have publications from America, from Japan, from Holland in 2008. So this was perfectly legal. Ok, but in, in the rest of the world, World, but not in parts of Asia, in 2016, in the Obama administration with Fauci and most of America and Europe, you could not do this work anymore. It was illegal. And the okay. lab, the lady, the Chinese lady went from America in 2016 to China and she got a grant from Fauci for $3.7 million to carry on the work in China. And Wang, uh, wh where did what she did do that? Where did she do that? And Wang, yes. Oh my. Este, yeah. Entonces lo que dice es que en Estados Unidos eh, se había prohibido, ¿verdad? En el 2016, este, manipular los virus de forma artificial adentro del laboratorio, porque realmente es eh, este, por, por la letalidad ¿no? de la misma, de la criminalidad, como dicen. Entonces, ¿qué hizo? Una China, una, este, fue a China, ¿tá? este con una muestra de, de eso alterado, y recibió no sé cuánta plata, este, ¿no? Fue, no, 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 sí, no me acuerdo sí, la cifra sí, que ella dijo, pero bastante dinero para continuar el trabajo en China, en Wuhan. Exactamente. 
Right. So it says uh-huh. Beijing there, but part of the work was done because uh, the the some of the groups were from Beijing, and the class four facility is in Wuhan. Ah, que algunos son de so, Beijing, que fueron. Y so que the, fueron para ahí a trabajar en Wuhan. So the politics are, so then it, now no one else has said this, but I have found this out, but only in my own research. I do not know what I'm saying, if it's true, the next part. Lucia. Yeah, ella va, ahora va a mostrar lo que, lo que investigó en su investigación, lo que hizo en su investigación. Ah. Okay, mm. go on. Okay, so it was reported in October or November that one female PhD student in the Wuhan lab, a young woman, died. That's, that's in Beijing? In Wuhan. 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 Ta, entonces lo que dice es que en octubre, en noviembre, hubo una mujer que, eh, en Wuhan que falleció. Del laboratorio, ¿no? Donde laboratorio. estaban haciendo. And, no, this is only research I have done, so that her, her photograph was taken off the university website and mm-hmm. she had a funeral. And after her funeral in October, November 2019 in Wuhan, people started to get sick sometime later. And I think only right. me that this is where it came from. So it was, I think it was an accident. Okay. Entonces, lo, eh, esta mujer, después de fallecer, tuvo el funeral, y después de ese funeral, donde fue mucha gente, eh, es que el virus se comenzó a, a disipar por la ciudad. Esa es la teoría de ella, que de ahí es de, o sea, de Dolores, que de ahí es de donde sale el virus. Right, Dolores. And this PhD student was working in the lab of the professor that was doing this research. Y ella estaba trabajando en el laboratorio con este profesor donde eh, se estaban haciendo los estudios de la mutación del virus que ella había traído de América. Right. And this is the professor that had worked in America that had gone then to China and got the 3.7 million grant to continue this gain of function with the four amino acids site that was illegal in America. Y, claro, entonces el, el, profe, el, el, el doctor, este, el profesor recibió 3,7 millones de dólares eh, y vino de América a, Estados, eh, a China porque era ilegal en América. Right. And so it was Con really, la muestra. I think, an accident. Con la muestra. It Con was la muestra. an accident. Entonces fue un accidente. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. You know, I'm, a, I'm answering uh, Ricardo's question and the lady with Ricardo, you know, about, you know, the societal consequences for the world. And I do think it's a mixture of perhaps in China, they should not have continued this research and perhaps America should have not given them 3.7 million. But my opinion, I haven't heard anyone else say it. I think it was an accident that this PhD student died and that at her funeral, they, they didn't really know that why she died, my yeah. guess, and that it was okay. just a mistake. Okay. Entonces, lo que ella cree desde su punto de vista mm-hmm. es que realmente eh, esta persona falleció por un error, y, o sea, que en realidad no sabían bien eh, lo que tenían enfrente, o sea, qué tipo de virus realmente era el que tenían enfrente. Eso es lo que ella dice desde su perspectiva personal. Right, Lucía, Dolores. Lucía, wait a moment. Yes. Sí. Preguntan acá de hora Rivas que sí. se consulte si hubo algún registro auditoría este, hecho a, a este caso concretamente de la doctora China. Si se hizo una investigación específica, si ella tiene información al respecto. Okay, uh, Dolores Mario is asking, do you know if after this death of this woman uh, there was uh, any investigation, you know, any official investigation about the reason of the, that the girl died or something? No, my under, now this is only Mario, you know what I have, uh, I'm not sure if it's true, but from my thing, I think the, um, in China they realized there was deaths around December the Chinese government, and that would make sense because, say, if she died in October, November, we'll say the end of October, by the time people would have got symptoms, it would be about uh, two weeks later, so the end of October. 
So that would be the first family of the people who went to the funeral, my guess, Lucia. Ok. Eh, bueno, lo que ella dice es que como esta persona falleció eh, a final de octubre, noviembre, eh, mientras se manifiestan los síntomas del virus, que demoran dos semanas, eh, la familia, digamos, la más cercana a ella, fue la que habría eh, adquirido el virus, pero obviamente sin saberlo, ¿no? Claro. So then, um, you know, by the time enough people would have got it, it takes two weeks. You know, you can imagine that the Chinese authorities only really noticed in December, and there was a publication from Wuhan in on the 2nd of January 2020 of the first uh, 49 people in December. But I think the virus, by the time they would have noticed it, taken samples from 40 patients and have the results published on the 2nd of January 2020, mm -hmm. it would have made sense. That's how long it would take between the funeral, the pe first people getting sick and enough people to get sick. And then the investigation started in the last week in December 2019 and January 2020 in the Wuhan lab, Lucia. Right. Entonces lo que ella dice es que, claro, entre que la, eh, esta persona falleció, después empezó a contagiar a la familia, y eso se siguió eh, desparramando por Wuhan, eh, recién a final de diciembre el gobierno entendió frente a lo que estaba ocurriendo y había, hicieron un estudio a 40 personas. Y ella lo que menciona es que hay un estudio publicado el 2 de enero del 2020, o sea, de este año, donde realmente China dice, sí, hay una pandemia. Eh, y estos estudios habrían sido realizados a final de diciembre del año pasado en China. Ta, y ella It también puede agregar out. algo, bueno, ta, que ella también había dicho este, eh, por los tiempos, ¿no? Mm -hmm. es, eh, sería lógico que fuera a través del funeral de esta chica. Exacto. De, 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 a fines de octubre, principios de noviembre, y cómo siguió el contagio por lógica y los tiempos, ¿tá? Eh, lo más seguro que fue a partir de ahí, de, la, el punto de partida que digamos, ¿no? No sé si entendí. Sí, gracias. Ah, está. So right. maybe, I, maybe I can say that America was saying that it came from China, which was true. But the Chinese government were saying it came from America, which is true, Lucia. Ok, claro, entonces está este conflicto eh, de pelea entre, entre Norteamérica y China, ¿de dónde vino el virus? Porque en realidad el virus, el virus salió de América y claro. fue para China, y China claro. dice que es de América, y en realidad es como algo bidireccional, por eso también esos conflictos que hay eh, a nivel político y demás. Mm. Pero, yes. So the other thing that's really not good is that I think the American government and Fauci should not have given $3.7 million to the lab in Wuhan when it was illegal to do this research in America. That is a big issue. Claro, y ella lo que dice también es que Norteamérica nunca le podría haber dado 3.7 millones de dólares a este laboratorio en Wuhan porque es ilegal. ¿Verdad? Eh, entonces para ella, para, para eso ella es una cuestión muy importante porque ya hace varios años que eso está prohibido. Exacto. Right, Dolores. And the reason why it could have been a lot worse to answer Ricardo and the lovely lady beside him. Hi, thank you. <laughs> My name is Estela, 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 Estela Dolores, Ricardo. Estela Pelto. <laughs> thank you. So the reason, Estela, to answer your question, why it, it could have been much more deadly as a virus, we oh. were lucky that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. And the reason is that the furin allows the virus to get into the, epi the lung cells with two mechanisms, which has the potential to make it much more deadly than the normal one. Lucia. Yes. Entonces, lo que ella dice es que en realidad tuvimos mucha suerte eh, de que no sea un virus mucho más eh, letal para nosotros, porque, Estela, auxiliamos acá, porque este virus entra a dos, eh, 
eh, como que eh, pudo haber sido peor que digamos, ¿no? Lo que no entendí es la parte de que ella hablaba del... Can you repeat the last part, uh, Dolores, please? Of why uh, is the difference of why it could have been worse? So normally you have the spike protein that binds to the ACE2 receptor on the human cell, on the lung epithelial cell is one mechanism for coronavirus to get into the lung cell to multiply to make people sick, Lucia. Claro, ella, ella lo que dice es que a través de la proteína S, que es esta amarilla, uh -huh. eh, es una célula larga, ¿no?, que llama. Uh -huh. Entonces, eh, el virus entra por ahí, en eso de que es larga, ahí es lo que hace que sea menos letal para nosotros. ¿Es así, Estela? Sí. Creo que sí. No, no, no entendí sí. bien. Yo entendí sí, eso. Sí, era eso. Yo entendí Está eso. Está bien. También. Me parece right. que sí. But when they have this extra furan site, it can bind to this molecule here, and it has a second mechanism for the virus to get into the cell, which has the potential to make, it's a pathogenic me mechanism from another organism on how to get viruses get into the cell that's put in from another organism. So you have a virus with two deadly mechanisms, and it could have been much more deadly than it turns out to be, Lucia. Claro, right. Ella lo que dice, en la imagen que está abajo de la proteína S, muestra que hay dos mecanismos, dos mecanismos del virus entrar en la célula. Mm. Que en realidad dos es algo que positivo para nosotros, porque podrían haber sido mucho más, y cuantas más formas de entrar eh, ese mecanismo a la célula, más eh, letal para nosotros los humanos humanos, entonces que sean dos es algo de que hasta corremos con suerte leve, claro sí. so this is why it's called gain of function, is that one virus could functionally like Ebola or even if it was tuberculosis have a way of getting into the lung to make the, the bacteria get into the human body to multiply and if you start looking at how does tuberculosis or meningitis get into the body from the nose to make people sick and you add these mechanisms to get in all in the one virus you could have a really deadly virus Lucia hmm. eh. <laughs> sí. claro porque ella por ejemplo lo comparó con la tuberculosis no por lo que yo entendí entonces sí. como, eh, un, eh, la tuberculosis al respirar por la nariz verdad sería un mecanismo pero este otro tiene dos mecanismos ¿no? exacto eh, que es sí. lo que lo hace peor no so you sí. know this is this is not good because People who are healthy, you know, Neisseria meningitis, Estela? Neisseria meningitis? Yes. Eh, meningitis y miseria. Puede Men ser. Yeah, miseria, like Hello. meningitis. You know, Neisseria Men meningitis? Sí. Say, or tuberculosis, TB, Estela, Lucia. Tuberculosis. <laughs> that it mm. turns out that for these to be deadly, They all have a, a tiny region for how they get into the body or the brain. It could be a small piece of RNA, DNA. And if you start to put all these little things that make them deadly into the one organism, you're going to give that organism, um, you know, millions of years of deadliness from different species like meningitis or Ebola or TB, into a virus, for example, that it would never naturally have and make it really a bioweapon and deadly. Mm. Ok. Ay, ¿Entendiste, Lucía? Sí. Bueno, lo, por Dale. lo que entendí, ella dice que, que en, en esto de la, de la mutación ilegal de los virus, eh, es muy diferente, obviamente, cómo, cómo va mutando lo que es una meningitis, una tuberculosis, y que si ellos hubiesen transmutado mucho más el virus, o sea, hubiesen puesto más de estas partículas que entran a las células, hubiese sido como un arma 
eh, humana para nosotros. Biológica, claro. Una arma biológica y eso generaría generaciones y generaciones eh, de muertes, porque sí. el cuerpo humano no tendría los anticuerpos ni la defensa contra ese virus que obviamente no es natural, es todo transmutado. Creo que fue eso. Ah, claro, porque lo que ella decía era que los virus en forma natural, como tienen un mecanismo para entrar, ¿verdad?, y contaminar. Pero esto, al tener más mecanismos de poder entrar y, y, e infectar a la persona, es lo que lo hace muchísimo más letal y que a largo tiempo y por generaciones, como dijo Lucía, este, termina siendo realmente un criminal, ¿no? Sí, total. Um, Dolores, now um, do you want to to enclose here your presentation to con, to follow in with the other speakers and then we can continue with for questions to you in, in the absolutely, end. Absolutely, whatever you want. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, I, I, uh, no problem. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. Thank you very okay. much, Dolores. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mario. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Uruguay. <laughs> well, you're going to have to come and visit us. I would love to. I would love to. If you're ever in Ireland, you're very welcome to my house. I'll make dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Lucía, Lucía, dile que mientras, mientras ve las exposiciones, que tome sí. algún Jameson o alguna Guinness. ¿Que tome qué? Ah, la cerveza. Alguna cerveza. <laughs> Can I just say one more thing, just real quick? Un Jameson, oui, que no. Un Jameson, que todo mientras. What, what uh, Mario said is that while you are waiting uh, to, to uh, or drink a uh, Guinness, or was that? Oh, yeah. Or Jameson, Jameson whiskey. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. Whiskey is good. Can I On just say rocks. one more thing? How do you drink it? Yes, yes, Dolores. I just want to highlight this slide because I think it's very important because oh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. our summer, I'm sure you are worried because you are going into your winter and your influenza season this season. Yes. Yeah. Bueno, lo que ella dice que quiere, para ir cerrando la primera presentación, la presentación de ella, quiere mostrar esta gráfica, eh, siendo que nosotros ahora estamos acá empezando en, en invierno, y ellos ya verán obviamente, quiere mostrar realmente la influencia real del COVID en Estados Unidos. Come on. Ok. So very quickly, I am not a medical doctor, I'm not a medical doctor, I have to say that, but what yes. I was saying about vitamin D and C and zinc, as a preventative, you know, before the, it comes, that countries like um, Scotland and the United Kingdom now have recommended that people take vitamin D to protect them from the virus. So what I've said is correct. So in this graph uh, is to show that the virus will only come and go within about six weeks, Lucia. Okay. Entonces, lo que ella está mostrando acá es... Eh, en, en, la, en, la, en la gráfica roja es como muestra que el virus va y viene en seis semanas, ¿ok? Y una cosa que ella quiere destacar es que ella no es doctora, ¿está? O sea, ella no. tiene un currículum imponente, pero no es doctora, sí, sí. entonces ella lo quiere destacar. No, so doctora that, en medicina. You know that sí. the people in South America, it would be great for me that you spread throughout the southern hemisphere that people can help protect when it's your winter with vitamin D, C, and zinc. And it has been shown that hydroxychloroquine and zinc for people who are old and people with cystic fibrosis, that it is really works well to prevent it. And it's one hydroxychloroquine tablet every three weeks with zinc every day, Lucia. Entonces lo que ella dice es que um, eh, el zinc... Eh, es un elemento muy bueno para poder prevenir lo que, este la corregime, para poder prevenir lo que es la gripe, junto sí. a los complementos también de vitamina C y D. Sí. Y habló de hidroclo... la hidrocloroxina. Ahí está, este, que eso dio muy buen resultado para ayudar este, en el tratamiento de los infectados. También. La gente mayor, Ay, pero no, no como prevención. No sino, como prevención, sino como tratamiento. Como tratamiento claro. en los casos ya desatados. Claro. Bien. Y just want to mention one more thing about hydroxychloroquine, Lucia, and just as always, I'm not a medical doctor, Lucia. Okay. Yes. 
Entonces ella quiere destacar algo más de la hidroloxina, eh, no. siempre destacando no. que ella no es una doctora médica. Y es... Ok, so can you still see my screen? It's now a Word document. Can you see that? No, I was looking at the PowerPoint. Okay, I, okay, so I need to share my screen. I just need literally two more minutes. I know you have another speaker, but I think this is important because we want to um, save lives in South America, Lucia. Okay, bueno, ella quiere compartir ahora un archivo que tiene en Word que le va a tomar un minuto. Y así ya seguimos con el próximo sí, eh, sí. que, que sigue esto la lista. Puede salvar, esto puede salvar vidas en Sudamérica. I just, I'm not sure how to share my screen. I just maybe need help. Um, this I, is important. Can you PowerPoint? Uh, It says my screen sharing is paused. Stop share. Maybe we could start the share again. Share screen. Yes. Um, yeah, I think it's here. Okay, so this is important, and I'm sorry for the next speaker. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Uh, Word document. Yes. Yeah, so it turns out that um, that in January 2020, this professor Michael Levitt. Can you see Michael yeah. Levitt there? Yeah. So he predicted that the death rate was not so, was more or less the same as a normal influenza virus in January. And he was right. And the reason why he did that, oh, I'm sorry. Um, the reason why he did that is that he looked at the way the deaths of the cruise ship the uh, Diamond Princess, Lucia, he was able to calculate that it wasn't as bad as everybody was saying. So, um, Estela, ayúdame y lo que ella está... El, que este señor Levitt aparentemente este, predijo que no era tan malo este, porque se podía comparar como la influenza, eso es lo que le entendí. The reason why that's important yeah. is that there was no need for the... He already said on the 31st of December... So, the 31st of January 2020, there was no need for any really a pandemic, no need for the lockdown or anything, and he was exactly claro. correct. Claro, eh, que, él, que él estaba correcto eh, en ese sentido y que estaba como de más tener toda esta cuarentena y haber este... Cerrado las fronteras. No, si era su vida normal, ¿no? Sí, y, sí, exacto. So I'm having an issue, I can't uh, share the screen, but just to say that I have done... Uh, I'm writing a report which will be to our Prime Minister. You know, I'm writing an open letter next week. I, um, but it actually, I went into a lot of research to show that there was huge amounts of evidence in January, in February, there was no need for the lockdown, Lucia. And in, okay. in Europe, we locked down mm -hmm. in March 2020. And the reason why I'm saying that is, is that people in South America take the precautions of uh, vitamins and zinc and have an hydroxychloroquine and zinc, you won't have to worry about, you won't need to lock down and you won't need to worry about this huge death rate. Ok, entonces lo que ella dice que le va a presentar una carta al primer ministro y eh, que las medidas en realidad en Europa se empezaron a tomar a partir de, de marzo de este año, ¿verdad? Y lo que dice en realidad es que acá en el hemisferio sur no nos tenemos que preocupar y que no habría la necesidad de eh, cerrar las fronteras y cerrar los países de la forma que se está haciendo actualmente. And maybe just quickly, if you can see the word document, he predicted yes. on the 1st of February 2020 that the virus in China would be gone very quickly and that it would decrease every day and that by the third week in February it would be gone. And that in total, there would be around 80,000 people would get it and 3,000 deaths. And in that. China, on the 16th of March, exactly as he said, mm -hmm. when the virus had gone, there was 80,000 cases and 3,000 deaths. Right. And, and maybe just to finish that in March of that week, there was no new cases. So he was exactly right in February. 
And so that means they knew it would be gone by March. So there was no need for the lockdown in, in Europe or America. Mm -hmm. Right. Entonces lo que right. dice Dolores es que el doctor Levitt en eh, mm -hmm. febrero... Nobel Prize winner. Right. El ganador del premio Nobel. El ganador del premio Nobel, eh, en febrero habían 80.000 casos eh, de COVID, de los cuales solo fallecieron 3.250. Y él te dijo eso, que para el, marzo, claro, ya no iba a haber y, 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 eh, necesidad de, de hacer esas cuarentenas, que ya exacto. desaparecía. Él predijo los números y los números se dieron a, el 13, eh, a, en la primera mitad de marzo. Eso dijo. Exacto. So very quickly, I know I, I will finish now, but um, I just wrote this up today and it will, we will be publishing it to our Prime Minister to, to end the lockdown in Ireland. But I won't go through it, but I just went through Professor Ferguson's failures in the last 20 years, Lucia, really quickly. Lucia, you can look yes. at the screen. Solo ella quiere aclarar eh, un punto más importante que considera importante para ir cerrando su charla y de lo que le va a presentar al primer ministro que le va a escribir la semana que viene. So I think it'll be obvious to you, you don't have to, you know, translate maybe, but in 2001 he, pro he projected foot and mouth disease. He uh -huh. was entirely wrong and he cost 1%, you know, 1 billion, 1,000 million pounds in 2001. With fit, foot and mouth, Professor Ferguson was entirely wrong. Okay. Uh, Estela, foot and mouth? Ferguson. Ferguson and Imperial College, you know, the same modeling was wrong eh, in 2001. La, la Facultad Imperial, el eh, eh, predijo malas cosas y, sí. y las consecuencias, a ver que ese se lee ahí, eh. Claro que se había equivocado, porque predicho como 50.000 muertes cuando en realidad eran 250, ¿no? So sí. in 2003 and 2005, he was entirely wrong uh, with bird flu. He predicted 200 million deaths and there was 282 deaths. <laughs> What a so, difference. Yeah, in, in with bird flu, in, you know, with bird ah. flu, he predicted... 200 million people would die, 200 million people would die with bird flu, yeah. and actually it was 284 people, oh. so he was wrong by 199 uh, million people, yeah. 999. Él predijo que la gripe aviar iba a, a matar a 200 millones de personas, y en realidad fallecieron 282, o sea que ya van dos veces, ¿no?, este, que, con, sí, esta, con la influenza anterior y esta la aviar que, que, que así predijo totalmente mal las cosas claro so, Lucía, dijo, this is I haven't seen anybody else presented this way but this is what I've been working on the last couple of days and this is how I'm going to present it to our prime minister next week claro ella con todas estas evidencias e información es que va a presentar la carta abierta al ministro de Exacto. Irlanda para que cierren las cuarentenas, para que, se, que lo saquen, digo, porque ya como que no es, no es necesario ya. And then two more, so in 2009 he predicted with swine flu that there would be 65,000 deaths, and again there was less than 500, so he was entirely wrong again in 2009. Con la porcina pasó lo mismo, predijo 64.500 este, muertes y también era, una, era muy escaso, creo que 400. So now we have corona, you know the coronavirus, and in the United Kingdom he predicted uh, 500,000 deaths, and I think, I don't know exactly how many, but he's entirely wrong. So what I think is that when he came out with the coronavirus, why I'm saying that scientists need to engage in policy and open debate is he should have been challenged more, you know, 
so that he didn't do this, lock down the world by another prediction that was entirely wrong. Claro, por todas las otras anteriores predicciones erróneas que hizo, tendría que haber sido cuestionado más antes de tomar estas medidas de cuarentena. ¿Estás de acuerdo, Lucía? Totalmente, sí, totalmente, porque es la tercera vez que se equivoca. O sea, claro, que, eso. Sí. So, right, so that's it, that's what I want to say, but I just wanted to say that you don't, in, a, in South America, then, if people are healthy and they take the vitamins and doctors prescribe hydroxychloroquine and zinc, it turns out the death rate, if you do the things properly and you don't lock down and you don't, you just quarantine or help the elderly, you don't have to worry in, you know, in, in the Southern Hemisphere, because actually he, the death rate is around the same as a normal influenza. And on average for the elderly, they use, lose one month of life. You know, for the people okay. who die at 82, they die one month earlier. So it's not as worrisome as you should, you shouldn't worry so much. Ah, entonces lo que ella dice es que acá en el hemisferio sur no nos tenemos que preocupar, eh, que ella no considera necesario el, el cerrar las fronteras y las medidas de cuarentena, mm. eh, y que estemos tranquilos. Claro, porque lo está comparando con eh, que, que va a tener los mismos resultados que una influenza este, normal. Con... No, exactamente, que sí, sí hay que encuarentar, eh, en poner, perdón, poner en cuarentena a la gente mayor, ¿no? Que, que es este, el grupo de la gente. Y que no se necesitan no máscaras, ni hacer cerrar fronteras, ni hacer cuarentena, y que si hacemos las cosas bien, las, eh, van a salir bien. Especialmente really utilizando para el tratamiento la hidrocloriotación. Lo, 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 Floricina, que no me sale. No, Dale. Hidro, hidro, the other important thing is the Nobel Prize winner, you know, Nobel Prize winner yes. was already ex exactly saying what was going on and he had a Nobel Prize. You know, he yes. was really, and he was right. He was predicting in January what would happen a week later. And he was right. And in February, he said what will happen in, the, in February. So it was absolutely criminal that, you know, he was right that in March, like six weeks later Gracias. or two weeks later, that <laughs> he was right. And they took this model from a guy that has been wrong all the time, you know. So it, it's just totally wrong what's going on. But you don't need to worry with this coronavirus, you know. Claro, Thank ella you. lo que dice es que el, el, el premio Nobel respecto a sus, uh, sus estadísticas sobre la gripe y demás, que es una fiebre más, o sea, es una gripe más, y que realmente no, no, no son necesarias todas las medidas extremas que se están tomando. Claro, y fue el único que predijo bien las cosas en tiempo y forma, ¿no? Gracias <risa> por